imagine this. I'm reading my slide fast, 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 but then I see something I want to take a picture of. But I don't feel like taking my phone and trying to center it over the ocular for like half a minute or even to take my ocular out. I want to keep working, but I want to take this picture. What do I do? Well, microscope camera and a microscope screen like this one is the solution. This is my newest, most favorite digital pathology thing that I recently got from iMiller's microscope. And today I have Mike Miller to tell us how exactly to take pictures with that device. How exactly to take pictures with that device without needing to connect anything to the computer. Zero workflow disruption. Let's dive into it. Welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining me. I Look what I did. I did put this uh, screen on my own without any help and I have it on video and it's going to be linked somewhere in the cards. And I'm super happy that you joined because I want to know how to take pictures with this thing without connecting it to the computer. How do we do that? And you already gave me some, some instructions. So yeah, so what you have there is, is the Path 4K camera that we provide at iMiller, and we have the optional uh, HD screen that you can connect right to the camera. So it's a really good tool. For... Perfect, there we go. So you can see actually, yep, there is a camera there. And as you said, the mounting screw is very simple, just one thumb screw to mount the camera on uh, the screen onto the camera. It's a really useful tool, what we like to call as a heads up display. So if for ergonomic reasons, you can look at the screen instead of the eyepieces. For teaching purposes, you can have the image up for other people behind you to see easily. So it's a really nice tool. And as you mentioned, yes, it includes a lot of components and characteristics of the software without needing a computer. So I think you have some little additional components that comes with yeah. the camera. So Perfect. you told me to get the mouse and I know that you guys now have a wireless mouse. So mm -hmm. if anybody gets the new camera, I already have this stuff one for over a year. I don't know, definitely right. over a year. So now they come with wireless mouse, but I have a wired one with a USB cable and I do have yep. an SD card because to do this, we need to put the SD card in the camera right there, right? Perfect. Exactly. And then again, yes, the mouse comes with as well as an SD card. And actually, uh, we are kind of actually switching the camera over to a slightly newer version that, re that allows you to save it to a USB stick, right? SD oh, cards are a little bit uh, older and more complex and USB is easy. So you're still you're going to be able to use a, a USB stick instead in the future, but same functionality. So my thing is old. <laughs> uh, same quality is just a slight, slight version change of that. Like I that's said, okay. the USB is a little bit easier. A lot of cameras and a lot of SD cards, so that's not a problem for me. So let me insert it. It has a slot here, and then. We're... And you notice maybe you didn't see there, but it uh, on the uh, it when you put the SD card in, it says SD card inserted. Just so you know, it flashes on the screen, so you know that it's it's ready oh, to see. go. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. The, everyone saw, just not you. Um, the mouse goes in the back. Uh, there's going to be a USB port that says mouse, and you'll plug it in right on top. In the camera or in the in the screen? In the camera. Yep. Okay. Good question. Right yeah. into the camera. Yep. So the camera has its own, call it little micro computer in there that allows you to control the functionality there. I have my mouse. Let me let me show what is happening on the screen. Maybe. Okay. So I have my mouse, and magic happened. There you go. It's just stuff on the so Mike, can I record what's happening on this screen as well? Like screen. You can, recording? Alex. Yep. So uh when if you want to put a slide on first, of course that'd be yes. important to see a nice pretty picture. Right. I have there my we go. favorite slide for demo purposes. It's an adrenal gland from an opossum with a parasite belonging to the Apicomplexin, uh, to the apicomplexin parasites, best noitia, and it basically are those blobs. Okay. Are perfect. I'll take your word for it, but <laughs> um, perfect. So yeah, so so the first thing someone may want to do with uh, with a new camera is adjust some of the settings, right? So yes. if you now move your mouse to the left side of the screen, you're going to see a um, camera yeah. settings window. There you go. So you asked about image capture, or actually you asked about record. So the camera can actually do both. So you're going to see there a snap button snap. as well as a record button. And so when you click it. snap, it's going to give you a notice that the camera was, the image was captured. And when you click record, it's going to start a timer and then start recording the video. I did start the timer. I'm going to keep it. 
So is it recording just the image from the camera or everything that's happening on the screen? Like, will it record me showing up the, like, if I pin at this uh, upper toolbar, will it record it too or not? It's not gonna record the toolbar, but it's gonna record okay. anything you do on the screen. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Good question. So let me do some annotations. So yeah, so uh, again, uh, in the live view, you can, or, or in a captured image, you can you can annotate. Um, of course, we wanna make sure that your microscope is calibrated ahead of time, but that's a, you know, something that we can help guide you through. We have videos to calibrate the scope. A different video on that, and I have a special calibrating slide, so I'm gonna link to that as well, either in the cards Perfect. or in the description below. So yeah, once it's calibrated, of course, you wanna select the magnification you're using so it's accurate. But then you'll see there that you get a large selection of measurements. You have a standard distance line, you have parallel line tools, you have circles, radiuses, angles, you can even do a, an area tool to figure out the area of a cell. So it's very, very powerful in the software capabilities, I'm sorry, measurement capabilities that you get, again, even without a computer, just live on the screen. Okay. You can okay. change the color, the size, the thickness, the font, all that stuff as well as easily adjusted. I see the trash can. Okay, let's, yep. let's is this? What's this one? Is this just, oh, that's the, oh, so if, some half circle thing. I can't quite resolve what you're, what, what measurement you're looking at there. Um, just I'm with the camera here, at, but. Let's see if it shows me the name. I'm looking at the round, at the circle that has part of it darkened and okay. it makes like an arch. Okay, so yeah, you can do an arch tool uh, to give you kind of a spline tool so you can get a distance across a non-straight line so you can figure out how long something is without it being straight across. So yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a wide assortment of measurement capabilities, I guess is uh, so simply said. Okay, and I'm basically making a video right now. If I go back, how do I go back to switching off the video? Yep, so you pinned the top toolbar. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is unpin that. Okay, ah, and then... Yep. I and then the it'll stop. go there. There you go. Okay. I stopped my recording. All right. And my measurements stayed on the picture. Um, do they stay forever when I take a snapshot or how? So great question. There's just like most camera settings, I'm sorry, software settings on a computer, you have the ability to capture with or without the annotations. So it's just a matter of how the customer is expecting mm -hmm. or, or wishing to use it. It can be customized to, to their needs. So they can capture and merge the images together. They can capture it separate as well. Okay. Do I see it somewhere? How am I doing it or? Yep, so to go back and, and view your gallery. So again, we talked about moving the mouse okay. to the top is your measurements, moving the mouse to your left is your settings and moving the mouse to the bottom, if you go to the bottom is gonna give you a couple different options. So I think you've explored the digital zoom, right? You can zoom in and out digitally. Uh, I can see that you have the image flipped, right? You wanna always match the orientation. Yep, there's the digital zoom. Um, you're flipping the image to match the orientation of the eyepieces, but over to the right or somewhere, you're gonna see a little folder and that's gonna allow you to explore yes. your gallery. There I you go. Know, and I it's gonna, see there you go. Part. Oh my goodness, okay. And I have our pictures. Okay, so I see that this is, one is with and one is without. No, but I think, I Again, it's a matter of how the software, uh, the camera settings are set to capture uh, mm -hmm. together. But if you go back another layer, um, you should be able to go to the video, right? Yes. And here's my There you go. So now you can play back your video. And we can, uh, if you move the mouse, it should allow you to. Oh, yeah. To move it uh, forward. There you go. Yep. You can, you can fast yeah, forward, I, I believe, through it. the slide, then it would be more. Um, <laughs> yes, video. yes. Uh, I don't think the video captured the. Okay, so again, it's a matter of just a setting, perhaps. Yep. Okay. Okay. No. But yes, that it was a video. Yes, we should have moved the slide. You are correct, but uh, nonetheless, it is definitely captured a video. Okay. Um, it is capturing. Let me move the slide a little. <laughs> Let me move it. Change the objective as well a little bit. Yep. So it's real time 4K, 60 frames per second in HDMI output and you know auto exposure is on. So when you change objective, it's always automatically compensating for the exposure values. So everything's real time. Perfect. 
So, Mike, it is, I love it. It's just so cool. I'm <laughs> going to be just showing things here and making videos of myself. So we're going to be seeing a lot of that. And I'm going to be tagging you all the time. But Perfect. other than my application for, for, you know, spreading the knowledge about digital pathology, what are the main applications uh, for this device? When people get this, what do they do with it? Yeah, so a camera is used for a wide range of things in microscopy. Obviously, we're talking about clinical, uh, you know, pathology here in your it's your audience there. But, you know, this this camera is a widely used tool for many other industrial applications or educational tools. Um, but in the clinical space, of course, you know, attending is mostly like you're going to expect having a camera on their microscope. Um, of course, they're usually going to connect that USB to a computer. But in laboratory settings, right, so you have, you know, usually three shifts running a lab. Um, they may want to document certain instances for training purposes purposes. They may want to be able to record what somebody's looking at under the microscope, or again, just having mul multiple people standing behind a person seeing what they're seeing. Um, you know, you can use the mouse as a pointer so you can point out different features and, and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people are, are used to or, or familiar with a multi-head microscope system, mm -hmm. multi-head systems. I'm an optics first person. I always believe in learning through optics, but those arms can be a little expensive. So uh, having a camera allows a larger audience to view that. So it's a very uh, good replacement for multi-head microscope as well. Um, and we have some customers in the clinical space that are now capturing images right into their, their patient information systems like mm -hmm. Epic or Cerner. They can capture right into that patient record and then it comes up live. So there's a lot of different ways you can utilize the, the camera there um, in the clinical setting. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me again. And Thank you for sending this fantastic screen. I love it. It's my favorite new digital pathology thing. No problem. We just scratched the surface too. The Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you are interested either in Path 4K or in the screen or in both of them, I'm going to link to a special page where you can get the deal from iMiller Microscopes to get any of those things. So go ahead, check it out, and I talk to you in the next episode.